Hey, what's up Space Survivors? I'm Milo Živković, game designer and story writer at Zero Gravity, and today we bring you another Let's Play video. Now, as some of you may remember, our last Let's Play video covered the Kessler update back in December 2017. Since then, Hellion received a number of new updates, most notably the Craftwork update that brought crafting mechanics to the game, followed by the new ship introduced in the Steropes update on March 1st, and finally the single player update that went live on June 21st. With each of these updates, new mechanics were added, while old features got changed or improved. This video aims to cover some of the most important changes, and will try to help both veterans and new players. Now, if you haven't played Hellion recently, the first big change awaits you in the main menu, and that is the single player option. Hellion is a rather unforgiving game, with a very steep learning curve, and this makes it especially hard for new players and people with busy schedules that can't afford to play a game every day. Single player mode allows everyone to immerse themselves in a hardcore experience of a lone space survivor. Since time won't reset your progress, as long as you remember to save regularly, and time won't flow once you turn off the game, you can take your time to learn the ropes or explore the world at your own pace. Single player in Hellion has two game modes, Standard and Sandbox. Standard mode is virtually identical to the multiplayer experience without other players and with the added option to save and load your game at will. It is perfect for those who want to learn the game and explore the world in relative safety. Sandbox mode, on the other hand, is meant for those who like to experiment and already have some basic experience with the game, as it comes with a bunch of dev commands enabled. But in this case, we'll just go and pick standard mode. As before, you start your adventure in a small cryopod inside the crew quarters module of your outpost. This is the starting scene, where you get to learn the basics of the game, equip yourself with all the tools you might need, and embark onto a journey into deep space. Note that every start in Hellion is slightly different, and various different events may play out while you are in the starting scene. On occasion, you might encounter a breach or various malfunctions inside the outpost's main room. And this will require you to override the doors, avoid some decompression and fires, then reactivate basic gravity and use your repair tool to fix any damage your outpost might have sustained during your long sleep. Once the repairs are finished, you can proceed to familiarize yourself with the basic systems, power supply and life support. Power supply and life support received a major overhaul in both Craftwork and Steropes updates. As you can see from the power supply screen, the interface was broken down into three main sections. At the top you have the capacitor, that shows your base's power reserves along with net production and consumption values. On the left is the list of all power producers, while on the right you have the list of all power consumers. Over here is the menu that shows all modules with any form of power producing system, like the solar patterns of our outpost module. On the right you can find all power consuming modules currently docked to your base, along with their individual consumption values. Base consumption is the minimum amount of power a module requires to stay operational. If you turn off the module's base consumption, it will also shut down any individual systems that belong to that specific module. This is also true for turrets located inside the modules in question. You can also visit the info screen if you want more information about various parts and how they interact with the system. Life support system received an even bigger overhaul with the addition of the air tank, as pressure management is now independent from the base's life support system. In practice, this means that any amount of air inside your base can be removed from the rooms and stored inside the air tank via depressurize command. So, let's say that you do not need any pressure inside the crew quarters module. You can now depressurize its individual rooms and use the air from the air tank to pressurize the outpost's main room. The system allows you to manage pressure across your entire base and evacuate air from breached rooms or put out fires and pressurize only specific rooms in case you do not have enough resources to cover the entire base. On the left you have the list of all life support systems currently attached to your base. We have the air generator and air filter systems. Air generator functions as before, mixing oxygen and nitrogen to create breathable air. The only difference is that the air is now safely stored inside the air tank rather than pumped into the rooms directly. The air filter system maintains breathable air quality across your base. If at any point air quality inside the room falls below breathable levels, your character will start suffocating, unless you have an equipped helmet and a jetpack with enough oxygen. 
When online, air filter will consume oxygen, or carbon filters if you have any, to raise air quality back to normal levels. Maintaining these two systems operational and supplying them with enough power is a key to any functional base. As before, you can check the info screen for more details about parts and how they interact with the system. Once you are familiar with systems and base interior, you can move along to EVA activity and base building. Base building hasn't really changed much since the Kessler update. It still requires you to find the module, dock it to your ship, then tow it back to base and then manually attach it using the module's RCS control panel. This is also true for exploration, as it still works in the same way as before. Exploring the derelict may not reward you with a new module, but the loot inside is always welcome. One of the largest changes in Hellion was the introduction of the Altair Corporation Steropes class, which replaces Argus as a starting ship. As a smaller vessel, Steropes has its own advantages and disadvantages. It is faster, more maneuverable, and uses less overall fuel compared to its big brother. Unfortunately, it only features limited life support capability, no engine and no reactor, relying instead on solar panels and a large capacitor bank for power supply. Steropes update also brought improvements to the security system, as all interface panels will now be locked for unauthorized personnel. This also prevents people from stealing your ship, since piloting now requires proper authorization as well. Despite all of the new changes, some objectives still remain largely the same for all players. And the first one is of course to move your base out of the starting debris field. As you can see, piloting interface had also received a complete overhaul and is now much more easier to read and interact with, as it uses standard key bindings. Moving the base is also no longer a chore that it used to be, as all ships now have the ability to tow up to three modules at once, albeit at the cost of increased warp cell consumption. To further help you with learning the basics of navigation, we've also done some major improvements to the navigation map. It now offers additional information, like the sphere of influence for all celestial bodies, which should help you avoid dangerous orbits. It also shows detailed information for all clusters and objects within them, as well as the ability to manually input custom coordinates by adding the numbers directly. Of course, you are still free to adjust them using the sliders if you so choose. In order to make your journey a bit more comfortable, Steropes also features the fastest warp drive of any ship in Hellion allowing it to go further and faster with a single warp cell than RGs can with all three. And last but not least of the navigation improvements is the automatic warp activation. Once you have properly aligned your ship to its destination, you no longer have to sit in the pilot's chair to manually initiate warp. Instead, you can get up and walk away. Just make sure you come back in time or the ship will leave without you. And finally, we arrive at the most important feature of all recent updates, the crafting mechanics. Due to its importance and impact on gameplay, locating and adding a functional fabricator module to your base, as well as providing it with a proper support infrastructure such as adequate power supply and refining capabilities, should probably be one of your first priorities after you've moved your base to a higher orbit. Now abandoned fabricator modules can be easily found around Betir or at its moon, Everest Station. And in case you find yourself at one of the outer planets, industrial zones are usually a good bet. So try Askatar, Hirat or Nimet. Once you have a base with a functioning fabricator module setup, you should probably set out to find some crafting ingredients in order to start making your own equipment. Derelict modules represent the best source of crafting ingredients as their hulls can be looted for various bits and pieces like broken armature or shattered plating. Once you have collected enough scrap items, such as fried electronics, damaged transmitters, shattered platings or ruptured insulations, take them back to the fabricator module and use the recycling unit to process them into useful components.
Recycled components include alloys, carbon fibers and circuits. Any item you may decide to craft requires a certain combination of these three ingredients, although some items also require other resources that can be mined, including nitro, hydrogen or helium-3. And of course, higher tier items will require more resources. Crafting represents only the first step in creating a functional in-game economy, based upon scarcity, supply and demand, and with various costs and benefits there to give player an incentive in order to play a certain way and choose one option over the other. Well, that's all for this video. Until our next time, fly safe and see you in Hellion.